Hi, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack, and in this podcast, I'll be reviewing the different types of bone fractures and the way bone is repaired after injury. Any break in a bone is called a fracture. There are different types of fractures that are classified and named based upon their shape, location, and severity. Some common types of fractures include green stick, impacted, open, comminuted, pots, collies, and stress fractures. A green stick fracture is a partial incomplete fracture in children that involves a break in one side of the bone and a bend in the other side. This fracture is named after the way a young twig breaks on a plant. The bones of children are still developing and are not fully ossified, so the extra protein their bones contain make them a bit more bendable compared to adult bone. An impacted fracture is where one end of a broken bone is forcefully pushed into the interior of the other. An open or compound fracture is when the ends of the broken bone pierce through the skin and are exposed. A closed or simple fracture, in contrast, does not break through the skin. A comminuted fracture is where the bone is heavily damaged at the location of a high-energy impact, with lots of splintering and broken or crushed bone fragments in the area. A POTS fracture is a specific break at the distal end of the fibula near the ankle, with significant injury to the distal tibia where it articulates with the foot here at the talus. A COLLES fracture is a break at the distal end of the radius near the wrist. Stress fractures are microscopic breaks in bone often quite painful, which are usually the result of repetitive strenuous activities, such as running or jumping, but they can also be caused by osteoporosis and other bone calcification disorders. Bone fracture repair goes through four phases. The reactive phase, which involves the formation of a fracture hematoma, or a blood clot, a reparative phase involving the formation of a fibrocartilaginous or soft callus, another reparative phase involving the formation of a bony or hard callus, and a bone remodeling phase. During the first phase, the reactive phase, inflammation is triggered as a result of the injury and the damage inflicted on severed blood vessels. A mass of clotted blood, called the fracture hematoma, builds up around the fracture usually six to eight hours after the injury occurred. As bone cells die in the area of the fracture, due to them being cut off from the blood circulation, lots of swelling and inflammation takes place in the area. The debris that accumulates along with dead and damaged cellular tissue, is removed by phagocytic white blood cells and osteoclasts. This phase can extend over several weeks' time. The next phase is a reparative phase that forms a fibrocartilaginous callus, also called a soft callus. As blood vessels begin to regrow and move into the fracture hematoma, fibroblasts, from the periosteum start secreting collagen fibers in the damaged area. Chondroblasts also develop and start producing fibrocartilage, which is a tough, dense, protein-rich cartilage tissue. Over a three-week period, the fibrocartilaginous callus forms, which binds together the ends of the broken bone. Following the formation of the soft callus, another reparative phase occurs. This phase involves osteoblasts from nearby healthy bone tissue that start making spongy bone trabeculae in the area of the soft callus. The trabeculae connect the healthy and damaged ends and fragments of bone tissue. Over a three to four month period, 
the soft callus is transformed into a bony or hard callus. During the final phase of bone remodeling, the osteoclasts resorb remaining bone fragments, while osteoblasts build up the compact bone matrix from the spongy bone around the fracture. The original shape of the bones is restored as closely as possible to their original appearance.